as we were saying, this site right here, it says transcendence. It's called Transcendence in Mayan um, Mythology. The, the author that actually has written copiously on various very interesting subject matters. Um, very interesting subject matters. It's hard to kind of qualify it without actually um, bringing up, let's see if we can just bring this up right here so perhaps you can get a better a better a better understanding of this particular person's site by us um let's see if we can bring up um the main details to this particular site open that window this is some of the downloads you know we try to download it because we never know sometimes you try to go back to a page and you don't find you know you don't find anything there or you don't find what you're looking for so these are some of the the articles um, that are written and have been written on the Siloam, I think this one right here, Siloam um, Net, um, Astro, I think it's uh, Astro Archaeology. Astro Archaeology. Let's see if we can open that one right there, Siloam, um, Siloam um, Net, um, Astro Archaeology, because there was a main page here that if you check this out, you might, I think it's an interactive um, bibliography, and it might be under the interactive, okay, this one opening the eyes of the Nazarenes right here, the woman clothed with the, um, with, the, with the sun and the moon under her feet. Oh, this is a little bit here too from the particular site. I think that would be the best name for this is the heavens here. Very interesting when you start to really study this. Because this is what the ancient peoples, you know, this is what the ancient peoples actually, um, um, this was their TV. This was their entertainment. This is it, it's just from the observation of the heavens. You know, just like it was the, from the observation of the living creatures that they, that they learned and were able to recognize you understand God, you understand, or, 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 or the Creator. And they went through their spirituality, was directly connected with their interaction with and their observation of that which the Almighty created. So it, it reminds us of um, what um, Bullinger says in the introduction of the Witness of the Stars. He says, for more than uh, 2,500 years, the world was without a written revelation from God. The question is, did God leave himself without a witness? The question is answered very positively by the written word that he did not. Um, and the quote is from Romans 1 and 19. It is declared that that which may be known of God, the true God, the God of truth, is manifest in them, for God, Ha Elohim, Hashem, have shewed or showed it to them, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being under understood, being comprehended, as we would say as Rastafari, being overstood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead and the Melakot, so that they are without excuse, end quote. But how was God known? How were his, quote, invisible things, that is, his plans, his purposes, and his counsels known since the creation of the world. How were these things known that Romans testifies to and throughout the scriptures? Now, once you get this, in other words, once you understand why the stars are important, you understand and how a, a, a true understanding or comprehension of the stars in connection even with the scriptures, this is why we keep speaking about the witness of the stars, as one particular volume that makes the case. You know what I'm saying? At least a biblical case, and the author links Dendera, ancient Egypt, and makes a connection between the the philosophical, you can say, approach to wisdom that was that was linked in some cultures, while other cultures they were looking at the stars, but they were making a a different interpretation of it. 
You know what I mean? So there's a, there's a story that's written in the stars, but it's how it's interpreted. It's like this is the reason why there are so many thousands of sects, different sects, denominations. We call them demon denominations, so-called counterfeit Christianity, or apostate, modern, Gentile world Christianity. There are thousands of denominations of ones who call themselves Christian. If you say, well, you're a Christian, like this one's a Christian, you're going to find that there is not, there's not that idea that, you know, um, um, uh, there are many mansions in my father's house. There are many. There's not that idea. No, each denomination says they're right and the other ones are wrong. You know what I mean? And, and it, I mean, this is why you have so many churches in, in some places, storefront churches all over the place. You know, and they can't get together. And the, and the real ministry of the word, the real the real spirit, because they're under a false prophecy and a false interpretation of the word. So the word is there, but they misinterpret, they misunderstand the word because they have not been taught, perhaps they're not teachable. And it's what Christ said. Christ said anyone that comes to me has to deny himself. They have to deny their way in order to learn Yah's way. Now the stars are a key connection of Yah's way. So a lot that we have um, in the scriptures, you understand, a lot that we have even in the Bible is best understood or comprehended by a study of the stars, a lot of biblical prophecies. So this is one reason why a lot of these prophecies that we've heard over the years, you understand, especially during the times of the Gentiles, have been so utterly false, have led to rise of false cults, doing ungodly, demonic things against the very plain spirit of the word, the spirit and the truth of the word of God, or religion being used to conquer people, to devastate civilizations, to take over cultures, to rob people of their lands. You see what I'm saying? That it's because of that wrong interpretation, that misinterpretation, because they have not understood the invisible things of God his plans, his purposes, his counsels, you understand? But these have been known since the creation of the world. So when we look at a lot of this ancient archaeology, and when people say, oh, that's mythology, and we think that the people were just foolish, you know, all of them, everyone's more foolish than us, that even the most foolish person nowadays, they would think is smarter because they have a cell phone or they have modern technology. You see, that is a very dangerous type of thinking in this time of change. It's a very, that type of thinking will lead you in spirit, you understand, to the void. That will lead you to perdition, to the black hole. You know, and that's, that's a worthless, a vanity way of thinking. Now, as we start to look at this right here, as we start to make this connection, you understand, with the spiritual or the correspondence of the heavens, then the plain interpretation, the true interpretation of the word of God becomes clear. But here's what the, the, the main thing that becomes clear is it's a matter of time. See, see, here's the key thing. It's a matter of time. How do we tell time? Time is so fundamentally important because how is it that we tell time? We tell time by watches and computers and modern technology, but where's what, what's the time based on? It's based on a little village in England called Greenwich. You understand? And what about the calendar? The calendar is also based on what um, the redaction. I think the Julian calendar is not based on the heavens. You see, these ancient peoples had it right, even though they may have used this symbology. You understand know this symbology? They may have used symbolic, but we have we are the illiterate ones today because we have failed and we failed to read the code. In other words, we are looking at the letter but lacking the spirit of truth to interpret the code. You understand? Know and as as this celestial time, see something is going on in the heavens. You know, this is why we're seeing this kind of bad weather and other signs and, I mean, on different levels, on the trifold level. There are spiritual things going on. There are things going on in the psychical world and there's things going on in the physical world simultaneously. So we really need to understand and look at this with the eye of the Nazarene, with the eye of Christ. 
with the eye of the Nazarite. So we need to up our knowledge and, and acquaintance with the facts. This is why the particular book, as you can see, this site is very, very interesting. Check it out, siloam.net, um, the bibliography page showing you some of the links. You know, as this particular author and the authors on this particular site um, make a very compelling case for a a, a a new, a revision of the old paradigm, the old way of looking and, and interpreting these images. Because the most astounding things, people will tell you, well, this is ancient Egypt and they were idol worshippers and we should have nothing to do with that. And then the Bible and New Testament tell you that Moses was learned in all the wisdom of Egypt and he was mighty in word and deed. You understand? And part of the reason why even the so-called religious folks are not mighty against the so-called evil that they decry in the world is that they have misunderstood the signs. They are misinterpreting the word and therefore will misinterpret the application of that particular word. So as we go through this site right here, I give you some of the visuals of the site. Like right here, this is a picture of Tehuti. Some say this is a... a, a, a uh, ancient type of or a prefiguring of uh, crucifixion in a sense. We have Tehuti, the master of numbers at Karnak, where he is he is stretching what they call stretching the cord between uh, Kunun and Seshat. Now Seshat we know has a link. They often call her in, in, in among the vulgar or the the profane. They say that she's the, 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 the weed goddess or the marijuana goddess or the cannabis goddess. You know what I'm saying? But she's actually a daughter. You know what I'm saying? The sons and daughters of the true God. So this was her particular domain. You know, like in my father's house there are many mansions. You know, everyone has a service. You know, some might be farmers, you know, and some might be craftsmen, and some might be midwives, and some might be teachers, you, you know, some might be soldiers, you know, and some might be governors, so forth and so on. You know, so there's, there's a lot of misinterpretation about these simplest of things because we as people are relying on a latter day, we are relying on mankind, a kind of man, to interpret the original man. It's almost like um, relying on the child to know the things of the parent. That is, that is in, impossible. That is impossible. So right here, this particular site is, as we said, very, very interesting because it shows us that to the people who are uninitiated, for example, people who who were were illiterate even in the time they might have been worshiping, you understand know, these images, or perhaps the priests like they do today, the preachers and pastors have given the people a faulty interpretation because that keeps them in line, that keeps them in a sheeple state. But the priests at the highest level they understood these things. You know, because they were calculating heavenly things. They were calculating the procession of the equinoxes. And this is something that modern, so-called, um, the modern European uh, pre and even to a degree post-medieval Europe, you understand, um, they went through great pains and bloodshed to even accept the truth or the verity that these ancient peoples knew some things that they didn't know. In other words, the arrogance the arrogance, the tyranny of arrogance was just that thick. So as we go into this 2012 period, some call this the age of the fifth sun. And we see an a interesting connection between um, a theme in, in, um, in the Mayan so-called cosmogenesis 2012 about first father, this whole idea about first father. Could we recall a biblical um, phrase concerning first father? where it says in Isaiah 43 and 27, it says, Thy first father hath sinned, and thy teachers have transgressed against me. Verse 28, to complete this chapter 43 of Isaiah, says, Therefore I have profaned the princes of the sanctuary, or the princes of the holy place, and have given Yaakov, or Jacob, to the curse. Now remember, we've spoken about that curse, and that curse is a part of the 
is at the root of the, 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 the state of so-called lost black folks. You know, when people ask, what's wrong with these niggas? It's the curse, the curse for disobedience. And it's Rael and Israel, or we can say black Israel, to clarify the true matter here, to reproaches, to reproaches. So now we see there's a link here of first father. Who is this first father? It says thy first father. And the Mayans also speak about in their um, cosmogenesis, they speak about a um, first father. Let's see if we can bring that up right here. They speak about, so we have this right here. They speak about first father right here. In this particular, let's line this up right here so you can see. Okay, um, Kawak Monster on one side. Now, of course, the people use their own names, their own slangs, their own expressions for these things. Here's uh, his mixed co coatal. Um, is the Milky Way or Perseus to uh, serpents. You know, now, of course, different people have different names, and the Mayan have their hieroglyphics, which differ, you understand, from the ancient Egyptian, you understand, or the Dendera, the Dendera hieroglyphics. But now, what are they trying to communicate? That's the key thing. How can we get the code to understanding what they are trying to communicate? And it's very interesting because the code to cracking what the ancients, you know, it's, what, it's like today. Today we're all on the, the modern Internet network, right, or the majority of folks are on the Internet network. So if a new story breaks, it's like everybody's talking about the same thing. So it's almost like we're living in a unique time when all humanity in a in a strange but yet real sense, is almost of one mind. It's almost like a, a tower of Babel, you understand, or a tower of Babel moment. Now, when we look at even the tower of Babel, something interesting about the tower of Babel is that that word Babel or Babel, you could go to any good um, linguist, Hebrew linguist, or anyone who studied the matter, it has two meanings, Babel, Babel, you understand? Bob L. Bob is a door of L. L is the Shemitic or the Afro Shemitic contraction of Hail, like Hila for God or the power. So we have the, the door or the gate, which, of course, in our minds, now that we recognize the reality of these things, and now we recognize the ancients understood about stargates as well. The ancients were well aware it might not be in the sense of the Stargate movie because we recognize that the movie is going to dramatize things, you understand, because it is a movie. But we know that a lot of this is based on truth. But in what context of the truth? That now becomes the search. You know, saying that it becomes the point of investigation. We know that, and we, can, we have a gut feeling. We can use our spiritual intuition. We know that there's some truth to even the science fiction movies and stuff that they talk about. As we learn more about it, we learn that the people behind it either are into the occult or they study these strange subject matters, you know. Um, and then they make a movie or some sort of media or write a book, just like the the whole Hunter, uh, Hunter Games and... Harry Potter and all these things, most folks would not be into any of that at all. But now we're moving into an age where people are getting into something that people have gotten into before. So it might seem strange to those people who, um, whose education, acquaintance, or background, environment has not prepared them. This is why preparing ourselves, study, you know, making these links, not jumping to certain conclusions, you know, based on, uh, you know, illogical premises, you understand, or based on what well, everybody thinks about it like this because we know that the crowd often is, is wrong. So the, the, the connection with First Father that we want to make, you understand, right here, in addition to Dendera, right, this is the Dendera complex right here, as you, you know, they call it, the, this is the planisphere, you understand, the planisphere, you know, and many have um, speculated on, and there's different books out there. There's a couple of really good websites. One of them is this website that we're talking about right now, and that's the Siloam. Um, the Siloam 
um, dot net website. You understand, which goes into some really interesting articles um, um, concerning um, biblical scriptural. The person writes from a perspective of a, a true believer in Jesus Christ, but according to the Bible, and is trying to figure out, you know, these things and and gives glory to the true God. You understand, but shows that ancient people were also seeking. In other words, all the ancient people were not as heathen as white European Gentile Western culture has led us to believe. They were not all just illiterate, um, you know, bloodthirsty savages. You know what I mean? Bloodthirsty savages. As ironic as it may seem, with all the modern technology, modern man, you understand, I mean, with all the benefits that we have of so-called science, we obviously, this present end time generation is vastly more savage. Now, you see the woman on the side over there is interesting. Some will say that is the mother goddess. Others will say that's the wisdom goddess. The interesting link that we find, and we put this in the cannabis matrix right here. I think we had uh, footnoted this. The interesting link that we will find, you know, with this when we're speaking about the subject matter of, of um, wisdom that there is in the scripture that wisdom is justified by all of her children. I think we put that in the appendix, the appendix portion of of um, of our writing, speaking on the whole uh, 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 a shesh, sheshat connection. Christ says something very interesting within the cano canonical um, gospels when he says that wisdom is justified of all of her children, Matthew 11 and 19, the Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man gluttonous, and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. So the religious folks, they said that Yeshua, that Joshua, that the Son of God, the one that they vainly worship today under the name of Jesus Christ, those were the same, the religious so-called now, uh, now-minded folks, you know, really ignorant, not even say narrow mind folks, but the so-called straight thinkers, the so-called orthodox. They said of the son of man, notice that, he, he qualifies himself as the son of man. Now, when we look at that in the ancient cosmogenesis of it, that son of man is likened to the son of Osiris. And this is where the the first father link becomes very, very clear, because who wrote Genesis? Who wrote uh, Barashit? Barashit? It was Musa. Musa, Moses, the same one who was learned in all the wisdom, right? In all the wisdom of the Egypts. Now, that means he was acquainted with, with both the wisdom. That means there's science behind this um, imagery. So when we're looking at a lot of this, say, ancient Egyptian, for example... Uh, let's bring this up again right here. When we look at, say, Dendera, right? We take a take an example of Dendera, and we see these symbols. Many will tell you that these symbols are pagan or heathen; that people worship them. Well, what do you think about the sports symbols today? Think about the symbols that people use, the sigils, a lot of the logos all over the place. Now, if people a thousand years from now were to dig up the ruins of modern um, Babylonian civilization and, you know, they find your picture, you know, your Facebook picture or printed out picture or something like that, or they just say that the people of this time right now, they were worshiping their sports teams. Would you say that's true? They find a, a, the, the, the bull on Wall Street. They'll say these people worship the bull god. Would that be true. From most folks' perspective, that most likely would not be true. They'll say, no, the bull is just a symbol because it's like bull and beers and it's the market and you have to understand that that's how they talk, so forth and so on. You know, we'll give all that psycho babble, but how are we looking at ancient cultures from that same misunderstanding? So, with all that being said, that's basically to say, let's dismiss, we must, in order to really learn the truth, we must dismiss a lot of the preconceived, you know, the, the, the bias, the ignorance, you understand, that has led us to preconceived notions 
when now looking at the the ancient astro archaeology, you understand, and how ancient peoples interpreted, you know, these signs and symbols. Believe it or not, this ball court right here is speaking of the heavens. This was their way of presenting in a hieroglyphic sense, because there's hieroglyphs all over the world, and this is Mayan hieroglyphs presenting the heavens and certain um, a certain time. They were talking about a certain time when the heavens would align to a certain time. And we're living in the time of this alignment right here. Now, what this author does on this particular page, you know, on this particular page is very, very interesting and is very timely. And, and this is why we're just making this video here and saying, check out this site, you know, download uh, you know, download everything that you can and try to go through it in its own order. And, you know, if we want to reason on it, let's, let's, reason, let's reason on this because this is very, very interesting. You know, they have ones and ones who they give millions of dollars to and fund big types of scholarships and other study programs for the top students to study these ancient cultures while they'll present to the public that these people were ancient and savage and then maybe a couple of movies, you know, that will make the people seem like so-called idiots until the white man came along. But the truth behind the matter is that they, their own scientists are studying these cultures very diligently, you know, spending millions of dollars taking these monies from other social welfare programs in society and are putting these dollars to study these ancient cultures. But then when we now begin to try to find out, well, what is it all about, folks are trying to spook us out about it or to um, consciously or unconsciously, you know, give us um, misdirection concerning, concerning this, this whole particular matter. Okay, this is another page right here which we also find very interesting. This particular article is about the Pistis Sophia, or the faith wisdom, the Pistis Sophia. You know what I'm saying? The faith, remember when Christ said that wisdom is justified of her children? In the Greek, he would have been speaking about the Sophia. You know what I'm saying? The Sophia. In Hebrew, the Hokma. and the Gnostic, the Akamot. You understand? Now, here is looking at the heavens, right? Looking at the position in the heavens on your on your on your left hand side. On the right hand side is a clip, is a fragment from the dendera. Is a fragment from from right here. So let's just show you this right here. Is a fragment from right here, right? We have a fragment. Let's move this over a little bit so we can put this as best side by side, right? The first father and in a sense the first mother. You understand? Or your biblical Adam and not Eve or Adam where he won. And we have a um on um, the combat, the combat, the conflict, the Gedla Adam is coming forward too, the Ethiopic book of Adam and Eve. You know, we hope to have that, you know, have that published very, very soon. Hopefully within the next seven or so days, and we'll touch on that as well. So this documentation can be out there, you understand? And ones can, you know, make the investments for themselves in an independent study way, or for their family, or brothers and sisters can come together and 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 build a branch of the society of line of Judah where they're at. You know, start a church, start a local, in other words, in that area, and then invest in you know, these books, these works as part of a library, you understand? We have to begin to be forward thinking, you understand, but have to get out of that, out of that um, spiritual kind of inertia, you know, and the, and the misinterpretations, you know, thinking that the ancient folks were foolish, but we're wise and, and, and don't recognize the signs of the time. So this particular page here is speaking about the Pistosophia, and it's an article called The Drowning of the Illuminati. The Drowning of the Illuminati in the Deadly Sea. And now, of course, the, the title of that article should be something that everybody checking out for themselves. You know, especially if you're into real Christ consciousness. 
Now, this article, like I said, we don't have the opportunity to go through it, you know, um, with you all like we would like to, but we're pointing you to it. The article is called The Pistis Sophia, P-I-S-T-I-S-S-O-P-H-I-A, and it's at the Siloam, S-I-L-O-A-M dot net. We probably put some of this in the in the description so one can kind of link with this, you know, and download this on their own. But it's a, it's a very, very enlightening. It's like one of I and I, I would say, favorite sites because the approach, you know, when we find those who seem to express and project a love of the truth, you know what I'm saying? In other words, a love of the truth, even if the, if the facts lead them in so-called unexpected or to unexpected conclusions which are true, so be it. It's not trying to, you know, make the reality. It's like, like this present culture, and this is what's so dangerous about this time of change and the fact that people are, are trying to project onto the universe or, or into the stars their own fantasies and their own lust and their own desires and make it happen in the real world. You see, so what they're trying to, you know, there's some folks that think that, well, we, what we can do is project on the heavens what we want to have happen. Instead of reading in the heavens and recognizing what is written, you know what I'm saying, and recognizing what is written, what is the truth, and, and working with it from there. So here we have a clip of Dendera, um, the book of learning versus the body of righteousness the book of learning, and it was interpreting these ancient signs in their true context, the making of a great shepherd. You understand? So now we have a little more detail and some very interesting interpretation of that planisphere, of that planisphere that um, some say, well, it was only made in the time when the Greeks were there. But when you look at the content of it, first of all, many of the Greeks were black. Let's just get that out the way. The original Greeks, the Ionians, were black people. So when people say Greek, you understand from a modern perspective, and we're talking about ancient, see, we're talking about science, you understand? You have to remember that at the root of the ancient um, European and the ancient Mediterranean civilization were Minoan, were black, were Ethiopian peoples. And the modern, um, the modern so-called uh, intellectual, educational, institutional system denies that. In other words, as we say, from a theological perspective, they deny the humanity of Christ. In other words, they deny that Christ, Jesus, Yeshua is black, and therefore they deny that anything good can come from Nazareth. You know what I'm they deny that anything can good can come from this people who, like Adam, like like the biblical, Christian, mythological, and, and Jewish um, Talmudic Adam, has fallen from his glory. As, as Christ says, what is it to you if the Son of Man returns to where he was? You understand? What, if, what, is, what is it to you if the Son of Man returns to the heights from which he originally speaking of the ancient times, fell. And when we black folks look at ourselves and be honest, we know that we was not at this low state in ancient times, that we have fallen to this low state. But, but exactly what is the truth behind the pictures? You know what I'm saying? What's the truth behind the scenes? This is what we must study, as the Bible says, study and show ourselves approved. Um, to God as a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So here, this is, like like we said, we really would hope that, you know, that we would have the opportunity to more over more than that, you know, because we've had the opportunity to study these things. And, and at first, not even understanding some of the things, looking over, scanning over, finding a portion that we kind of think we get a little bit, but, but, but having to, like, First, you have to take in the data. You know, first you have to get the get the data, and then from that data you make intel. 
So that's why sometimes it's, it's good to just read and study certain things without too much of a judgmental or a condemnatory. You see, this society approaches a lot of this ancient material, this ancient matter, and it condemns it. At least the people who have been put into a kind of religious, kind of a, 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 a drugged, a state, a state of sorcery, religious sorcery. See, they'll talk about us using kana, the kana bush or the kana bis as being sorcery from their perspective. But when you really look at what sorcery, pharmakesis is, it has nothing to do with herbs, with a natural herb that you basically are consuming in its most natural state. But what about the so-called drugs or the big pharma that are man-made products with names that we can only say are names out of this world. You know what I'm saying? We're not going to say all the names are demonic, but there there is a demonic connection with these pharmaceutical names. And plus, look at those side effects, you know, so forth and so on. So that's just a another kind of link right there. We just want to give you a, 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 a view of some of these um, particular images, and then maybe we'll go into um, some point-by-point. Point. You know, send some point by point analysis of it. Now, down here is from the Egyptian, according to Dendera, would be the 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 Bani Ha Elohim, or would be the sons of God or the children of God. You know, saying not just they, they, these are sons here, but this obviously is a daughter right here, the long dress. So we have the sons and the daughters of God, the children of God. Now we have something called rational utility. Then up here is mercurial compassion. Now, these over here, the eight, you know, in the Bible it talks about the seven and the eight. You understand? The eight, you know, there's a, there's a seven, there's an eight one who is, but not. These are the eight. Notice these eight figures released from bondage. These are also symbolic of the captives. Now, on this side, they call this St. John's quill. St. John's quill, or the, or the writing instrument. Some say the reed on a level. Now, with Sheshat, it was the reed. Some can link the reed, of course, is linked to the kana. The kana, look it up. The kana, as in cannabis or kana bush, you know what I'm saying, is a reed. And we know hemp is a reed. Above here, above her head, you can see it's clearly the marijuana, you know what I'm saying, the marijuana plant is being indicated, although previous European scholars thought it was just a star. They didn't really get it, you know what I'm saying? They didn't really get it. Um, some of them did get it, but, of course, that was suppressed because you have to remember when the Europeans even learned about um, the right or practice of smoking. You got to understand the Indians, the Peace Pipe, the Far East. When they, These things that were known to indigenous cultures were newly introduced, in other words, to Europa or to those in the rope of Europe. Right, so now we have Hathor here, and there's a very interesting explanation to this. Here's Tehudi or thought, you know, saying which some say would be the biblical David. Here is a sign of humility. Some say this is like the lamb or that particular nature, right? The lamb. Then this is Sheshat here. This figure here is, is uh, Seshat, which is known as the cannabis goddess, or is heavily linked with the the kana, the reed, the hemp, as well as the marijuana, you understand? And then we get to this point right here with this particular character, which is enlightenment, which is enlightenment right here. So now some see there's a link between this. Some say that if this is Tehuti is, is uh, David, Davi, Dut, Dude, Tehuti, right, type, and humility as the lamb, kind of represents Christ, then we know that to David was a kingdom. God said to David that through his lineage, you understand, would come Moshiach. Now we have a Seshat here, the cannabis goddess, so to speak, or the reed. She was also the one who was over books. So now the link with, with cannabis in the ancient world wasn't just like getting high or something like people say in the Western Gentile post-Woodstock um, trauma, drug trauma, you know, um, overdoing it, following white people in their dissipation. You know, the, the meaning has, has totally been, been lost there. But 
getting through this a little bit more so ones can hopefully see the link and the 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 relevance of this this image right here now here is hoppy hoppy or hoppet right um the two ducks as 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 a determiner symbol right there hoppy or some will say the baboon headed so forth and so on and there's this idea that when we look at these animals because we're used to disney Disney has made many people spiritually dizzy. So when you see these animal types, the first thing that people are going to associate it with is their last programming, you know, whatever their last programming sequence is. So if you see these animal types and we talk about a baboon, you know, people are going to think about some some probably Nickelodeon or Disney kind of baboon or, you know, whatever is the popular mythology. And that means that... With that in mind, it's impossible to get to the root of this. So this would be foolishness. It says that the word of God and the truth of God is foolishness to those who are perishing because they are not enlightened with the light. They stumble on in the darkness. Now, Revelation 22 and 1 says, And he showed me a river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Now, even here in Dendera, this is prefigured. If you can, if you're literate, if you are are symbolically, you understand, literate, you understand, to what the symbols mean. It's just like if I show you a language that you might not know, you can't really read it. You understand, until you learn the fidels, until you learn the the, 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 the symbols, the words, the, the grammar, the context, you know, the content and meaning. You know, as the master said, what are these but words? What are these but symbols? Unless we can give them, unless we give them the proper content and meaning, they will remain vain, you know, of, of no usage, like foolishness. Now, over here is interesting because here is what's the so-called winter solstice lines. Now, what the author has done in the siloam.net, and we read over it, and actually read over it, I think, twice, the particular portion in order to really um, get it and then check out the data to make sure that we can say yes this is true and this is that in 561 BC there was a particular winter solstice and something very important happened in in history and every time there's, there's these particular um, um, solstices or particular signs that align with heavenly times there's been some great change in the history of of humanity or among the 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 nations you understand in the words when we talk about the babylonian captivity there's an alignment when we talk about nebuchadnezzar or nebuchadnezzar there's an alignment when we talk about cyrus you understand the persian king now taking over after nebuchadnezzar there's also a particular alignment we, when we speak about the Israelites, the true Israelites coming out, there are certain alignments. So it's like this record is in the heavens. So even if people don't want to look up like the blind God of the world, don't want to see the one above him and want to say, I am God, I created all these things, and don't want to see the, the immortals above them are saying, you blind God. So the heavens are saying to people on the earth, y'all are under the blind God. You understand? And to the blind God, you blind God, because they don't want you to recognize, you understand, the witness of the stars. But it's written. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's written, and there's nothing that they can do to change that. All they can do is distract you. So they can't stop the heavens from revealing the signs. They can only keep you distracted and only tell you, oh, look, there's a solar flare. Oh, oh, look, there's a lunar eclipse. Oh, look, there's such a, you know what I mean? They only tell you those things that it's become so obvious everybody's talking about on the Internet. You understand? But there's other things that have happened. And some have looked and found correspondences in the heavenly register, which is interesting. Remember, we're not talking about horoscopes, astrology from a white Western Gentile heathen perspective. You understand? Because the heathen are dismayed at the signs. Be not dismayed at the signs. So in 561 B.C., we can see right here in Dendera, this would be Capricorn or Capricorn, right? This would be Capricorn right here. Here would be Sagi. Uh, the sage, the wise man, Sagittarius, or the archer. Here would be Scorpio. You understand? The scorpion. Now, what's interesting, if you see these lines right here, this is the 561 B.C. winter solstice line. Now we have 
he, he, you have to understand that when the heavens move, remember that's 561. This is 2012. Notice over what, by how many years, about 15, 14 to 1500 years, roughly. You know what I'm saying? Um, between 13, maybe to 1400, between 561 to 2012, right? If you round it off, you'll say roughly 2,000 years. That the degree of the heavens has only rotated that much. Notice that. So when you look at Dendera, when you look at the, the Dendera complex, or you look at the Mayans and these ancient cultures, somehow they either were there observing the heavens, all these uh, movements, and making key notations in their own language and hieroglyphs that latter people of wisdom you understand, and devoid of, 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 of that um, racism, you know, to think that these people are stupid, they don't know nothing, they're savages, then you're not going to really learn only so much. You might be blown away and opened up, but that only happens in rare cases. Wisdom does not tolerate that. And if you want to know who wisdom this, this mother is, read Proverbs. You know, I mean, we can go back to Amenemot, but that's a little bit, you know, that's a little bit before your time. Read Proverbs. Solomon, Solomon basically regurgitates that ancient wisdom because not it's his personal thing, but it is true. You understand? It is true, and it's worthy of those who learn it and do. Now, the heavens have only moved this matter of degree. Notice that, from, from almost this quadrant to this quadrant, when you look at the whole circle the so-called circle of life or the wheel of life. So that's interesting. So some some modern Europeans say that, well, well, the Mayans knew that which the Egyptians then knew. No, you know, they try to play. Now that's what they're trying to do. I guess maybe make videos, History Channel or something. They're trying to play the Mayans versus the Egyptians. Some say that the Mayans learned everything from the Egyptians. Others say that they got nothing from the Egyptians. So they're playing this game. You know, instead of instead of getting into well, what is this all about? You see, what I'm saying instead of getting into what is this all about, and and what's the relevancy of it. In other words, what do they share in common? Instead of you know the differences that schizophrenic, um, racist white scientists with a rational mind are approaching it, because they still in the back of their mind they're like, how could these cotton picking people know these things? And we have billion-dollar satellites, you understand? And we're just discovering it almost by accident, like the whole thing with Mali and, and Cyrus and Cyrus B. And they didn't, and they, they thought the Mayan were high on something. And then they got better satellites. And then in infrared, they got to see that there was a, a invisible red dwarf star. And and they're like, wait, that somebody somebody discovered that's exactly what the what the people of Mali. You understand, the Dogon people, this is exactly what the Dogon people said. You know, how could that be? And now they're running the story that, well, some extraterrestrials came down. And it was, like, giving them no credit to the people. Like, the people were just, just, just um, passive recipients of all this great knowledge that they just happened to preserve for all this time after receiving it so long ago. You understand, that in itself would just be amazing if that was the story, that was true. But um, now this is also another view of the circle of life, the heavens. Now it's interesting how this one puts here, this is, this believe it or not is, is a kepra or the dung beetle. Because there's a portion of the heavens that's called the galactic dung ball center. Some say that's where the holes are. That's where the black holes are, what Christ talks about, the, you know, the outer darkness. That's where the outer darkness is. And interestingly enough, they don't talk about it too much, but there's a lot of black holes that have been discovered recently in the vicinity of the Earth. There's a lot of black holes that have been discovered. They don't want, what they try to do is instead of talking about black holes, they talk about dark matter. That's, you get it right there, they talk about dark matter. But the light shines in the darkness, darkness doesn't comprehend it, right? So they're talking about dark matter instead of that. But when we look at this, it's like the four... You remember the four um, corners when we look at um, Ezekiel when he taught, and even Revelation talk about those those four beasts, so to speak. You know, we interpret it nowadays as the four beasts. In the ancient times, we can see that the dung beetle, Tauret, you understand, Tauret, Tauret. Some see a link with Torah, you understand, Torah here as well. The the man child returns at this particular point right here. We have 
this area over here, the galactic dung ball center, or you know, the galactic shithole, which that's what the black hole basically is. Let's be real. Now we have Kepra, Khepra, which is the the dung beetle. You know, the Egyptians view that the beginning was this dung beetle rolling, rolling this dung in a circle and forming the world. And people are like, these people were so savage. You know what I'm saying? But now as you start to put it together of what they're learning of what's going on and you're comparing that the ancient peoples were describing it in their language and modern man is just beginning to learn their language. So we have the word of God. You see, that's, that's the Pleiades right there. That's the panhandle. You can see that. The word of God, Kepra. We have Sebek here or Sobek here. You remember when Abraham, during the time of Abraham, Abraham sacrificed his son, um, and the, there was a ram that was caught in the thicket? If you look in the Hebrew, the thicket is called the Sobek. If you look in the royal Amharic, the Ethiopic and in his Majesty's Bible, they also preserve the name Sobek or Sebek. And they tell you that they're not really too sure about what this was talking about. But if you put it in the context of the time, you understand know the older type of, 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 you could say, God or timekeeping that they, that they um, use, that they so-called worshipped or they gave great worship to, was of Sebek. So when you look at the corners of the, the wheel of life, we both see a likeness of the four beasts, that whole idea of the four beasts, as well as we learn that the heavens were very important in time, in telling time. I mean, what will happen when the stars fall? How are you going to tell time when the stars fall? I'm not talking about the star stars. You understand? I'm talking about the satellites, you understand, that project the images of, of the stars that you have made, the gods that men and people have made. That lets them know what time it is. Now the stars get married or divorced. That's what time it is. You know, that's what everybody else begins to emulate. But they look up to that particular imagery. Now, here is speaking about from the abyss in the heavens below and through the sacred you on earth, the living dead ascend to height of heavens. Now, there's a lot going on here. And what the authors have done is take then take the heavens first of all as as the actual what the ancients all the different peoples were looking at even the hebrews in the bible what the prophets were looking at what ezekiel saw what they were looking at right and then linking the evidence from dendera and then comparing um the mayan the mayan so-called cosmo genesis and as we said there's a there's some very interesting information here and we hope that each one will take the opportunity, you know, to find the truth of this particular matter um, for themselves. So um, you can also check out the site right here, uh, Return to Eye of Siloam of, or Siloam, Eye of Siloam. So go check that out. This particular article is the, the title, the, the content, of course, but the title actually First, I must admit, caught my attention. Pistis Sophia, Faith Wisdom, the drowning of the Illuminati in the deadly sea. Is this what this time of change um, has in store or beholds for us and for humanity as we recall the first mother and the first father? More to come, my brothers and sisters. Stay tuned. Shalom Rastafari. More to come. Check out those sites that we point out to you. All right? Shalom.